So if, if the legendary Silky brings you a, um, a, the taste of the modern taste of Irish whiskey and starts to introduce you to that smoky flavour, then the dark Silky sort of takes that on um, a stage further. And dark Silky for us is, well, for me particularly, was inspired by my 11-year-old self. So my, I spent the, the typical sort of Eng kid growing up in England whose family were from Ireland would have spent my time uh, in the summer over here on uh, my grand and granddad's farm. And at 11 years old, my, the highlight of my time was to sneak down in the morning before granddad got up, get down to the range where he'd left his pipe and give a tug on that, that, to hit that pipe in the morning to make me sort of feel grown up and slightly illicit. Um, and that that kind of cold, sweet tobacco, ashy kind of aroma is what inspired the taste of what Dark Silky is, is today. So the Dark Silky, um, again, the component whiskies are supplied by Great Northern. Again, natural color, non-chill filtered. 15% um, of the blend is double distilled, uh, single malt matured in bourbon casks. 15% now of this whiskey is triple distilled, heavily peated, single malt, matured in, um, uh, in sherry casks. And the triple distillation brings you down from the sort of 55 parts per million that the, the, the malt is peated to. Um, and it brings it down to somewhere closer to 22. And that 22 parts per million makes up 15% of the blend. So for all you mathematicians out there, you can work out what that means overall. And then the 70% of this whiskey uh, is, is grain and it's virgin oak. Um, and again, you get this kind of popcorn, buttery, caramel sweetness. Um, and, and the beauty of that is it allows you to hang nice flavors off it. Um, just one second, guys. Can you just check that the question, if there's any questions coming through? Because I can't see anything. Um, so, so from a, um, a, a nosing perspective, altogether oilier. So you get this kind of almost linseed oil kind of richness that comes from, uh, and, and that kind of buttery, um, salted caramel note that you get um, to this, which you don't get on the legendary silkies. You don't get it anywhere near as intensely as you get on this. Um, you've still got that apple note, but it's, it's probably less, it's less fresh apple, a little bit more baked apple-y, if you like. Um, and it has a, that cereal note is, is softened, I think, because that sort of caramel note becomes much more to the fore. So, so that's that softness, that roundness, that balance that we look for is even more prevalent in Dark Silky, I think. For me, it's, um, it brings a, a depth of character that's there. There's a slight licorice note to it. it, it from a smoke note, from a peatiness, it's much more of a sort of dry, um, ashy, kind of earthy uh, note to it. Um, and it gives you a... Um, there's a stewed sort of stewed apple note to it, but it's also got a freshness to it. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel heavy, it feels rounded, it feels balanced. Um, it would be great, well, it'd be great to sort of uh, to hear your, your guys' reaction to this, because I think for me it's an interesting, oh, are there questions? Okay. So, thank you. For, so, yes, yeah, so Ondine with Colin Farrell, uh, the secret of Rowan Inish is also uh, um, where the Silky Legends come from. Um, this is a, for me, this, I suppose, for it, it, the interesting thing when we blended this was Moira and I got to spend some real time with um, Brian Watson, the guys at Great Northern, um, and we started to put, so I started to push the peated thing. And I think Moira was initially a little bit wary of it, but we kept pushing, so we kept adding a little bit more, 1% or 1% more, 2% more, and kept, kept pushing it to try and get that pipe tobacco 
aroma that, I, that, that reminded me of my granddad. And, and we got to a point where eventually Moira just said, nope, that's it, we're done. And, and so we dialed it back 1% from there, and that's where you get it. So for me, it, it, you know, it starts to tell you the story of where we want to be. This tells you how our whiskies are going to be from the Ardra distillery. Obviously, we're only making peated single malt, peated pot still, so we're only going to make one element of these whiskies, and we'll continue to, uh, to source the whiskies that are in Silky from, from, from Great Northern and others um, to maintain this style because we're not going to build a grain plant. We're not going to distill um, unpeated uh, whiskies for us. We're not looking to try and create a patchwork of flavors from the distillery. We are looking to create a singular style that would give people a really definite, distinctive idea of, of how a Donegal whiskey really should be. Um, so it's good to see you know people picking up on that oily texture and i think that's that's coming from that grain whiskey base which is made you know the maize element to it which these days um is is you know less prevalent because people are you know using more wheat based wheat based grain whiskies um which give you kind of lighter fresher easier notes whereas you don't get that sort of popcorny caramelly note um, which we which we adore, and and that virgin cast gives you beefed up kind of a beefed up um, colour. It gives you that wicked oiliness. It gives you lots of oak. It can be a bit drying, and that's why it's important to have those sweeter whiskies to go with it. Um, and Moira will be dead chuffed that Tina thinks the peating's just about right in this one. So um, the so yeah, so there we have it. That's that's sort of dark silky, and and that's where we think whiskey you know our whiskies will be going um from from our own distillery now we're working on another silky uh, the, another core release from silky that will be coming out later in the year so around about october um its structure is uh, broadly similar but it isn't it is quite a, quite a long way away from here but it, it is going to be significantly peatier a little significantly smokier and um uh, and gives us an opportunity to kind of really put a marker down as, for, as to how we think the, 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 the sort of taste of Donegal in the future should be. And, and um, uh, I see Colin w was listening to Laurie's chat the other day, so um, bless him, Laurie, had, we had a fun, a fun whiskey chat. I'm not sure how he managed to cut it down at all, but the two of us would probably still be talking if we had the opportunity to. Um, but we had a, a really good time unpicking the whole the whole industry, um, and and I suppose that's one of the questions that comes out of you know what what's going to happen if you look at Scotch whisky, it's much more it's much more categorised, it's much more structured, and that's done because you've got bigger players who can do can can impose the rules on um, on on the rest of the category that largely then gets adopted. I think the Irish whiskey, because it is both extremely old, ext you know, it's, a, it's a, an industry with massive history, but it's also extremely young. It'd be really interesting to see about how that that language develops, and whether there, whether regionality is a thing at all, um, or whether it's something that doesn't morph out. But it, what you guarantee, it's going to be a a, a much more organic, organic and perhaps a bit more chaotic as a times of development. So.